It's another great day for video games. We review a superhero game released some time ago. We're also happy to announce he's not one of those who runs about in tights with his underwear on the outside. Well, not anymore apparently. We also spent some quality time inside the Bioshock universe. From the first Bioshock all the way to Bioshock Infinite. That and more. We are coming to you from the Acropolis Gaming Lounge in the Barbican Center. And this is truly a sight to behold. I'm your host Kena, and you've just entered the lab. Opinion Wolverine is more of an anti hero, not really a superhero, but I like him. Main reason being, well, he got the wardrobe right. I mean, what's with the spandex and silly names? We've been programmed over the years to accept names like Superman and Batman as being cool. But think about it what kind of name is Batman? How is that cool, even for a kid? Anyway, here's X Men Origins Wolverine. Now that's a cool name. <laughs> Released May the 1st, 2009, it's safe to say this is another oldie. But I was able to sample this game at a friend's place. I played the demo on the PS3 and I was impressed. Most movie to video game adaptations are bad, and most video games in my experiences based on superheroes are also bad. With the exception of a few like the Batman games, but let's not forget just about every Superman game ever made. So when I played the demo I thought, yes, this looks and feels good, and like Kana said, he's not shamelessly parading about in his spandex with the underwear on the outside. Well I got an edge. That you do, mon frere. Let's begin with the high points of X-Men Origins Wolverine. The voice talent. Solid all around. It seems like the devs got their original lineup from the movie to do the voice talent. Hugh Jackman, Leif Schreiber, Will I Am and the others were all behind their CG counterparts and so the voice acting was solid. The overall audio is intact. Scores, explosions, footsteps, all well done. I didn't need the help. I was always better at this part than you. Your character's upgrades are also very useful. Your feral abilities all seem to serve a purpose. The end result was usually the same for most of your special attacks, but they all look pretty impressive, so no complaints here. Again, checkpoints, very important to me. Life is too short to be wasting it doing stuff over and backtracking, and the checkpoints in X-Men Origins Wolverine were all well distributed. The various fighting techniques in this game are good. But not great, and I really didn't expect much after I played the demo. At the end of it all, this is still just a beat em up. And as with most beat em ups, you'll find yourself using the same techniques over and over. And the pounce attack is something you'll be seeing a lot of in this game, especially when you'd like to reach enemies shooting at you from a distance. But just like I said with the special attacks, it looks good, so you'll enjoy using it for most parts. The story loosely follows the movie, so if you watch the movie, you'll see some familiar scenes. But the good part is, like I said, it only loosely follows, so there will be a bit more to the game than we saw in the film. Some make sense, some were good additions, while some just didn't add up. Striker's holding my sister prisoner. He was going to kill her if I didn't do as he said. To add to your list of abilities, you have mutagens. These are basically items strewn about the levels that increase your ability to heal, fight, and so on. A good addition. But some of them, just like some of Wolverine's large arsenal of moves, seem unnecessary. But it doesn't hurt to have them though. The dog tags you rip from the necks of falling soldiers are cool if you're into the whole treasure hunt side mission thing. But I don't care for such things, and this does not affect my overall completion of the game, so I'll rip them off when I see them, but I certainly won't embark on a quest to find them all. This seemed to mean a whole lot to Logan though, I mean, he rips them off with such zeal and passion, I mean, look at this. The boss fights are cool, but they drop into the okay section as well as the bad section, I'll get back to that in a bit. The graphics in Wolverine are okay, not at all great, 
even though it's a dated title. And with or without a great graphics card for your PC, I'm sure most will agree, there's nothing mind-blowing here. But they're fine, no real eyesores. The difficulty level drops in the OK section. It wasn't too hard, even on the hardest difficulty. As a matter of fact, other than a few boss fights, there was barely a challenge. And even those boss fights were no huge obstacles. But no complaints from me. Like I said, I love those end credits. Beat them and move on, that's my motto. Here's the bad stuff, let's get to it. A few restrictions in combat that took away from some basically simple expectations. Certain things you just couldn't do. Example, you're able to pounce on most enemies from far distances, but not some. And restrictions like these were clearly put there to make sure certain scenes were played out and certain enemy types were able to do their thing. But it was still annoying and unjustified in my opinion. Then repetition, and I'll always bring this up in a beat em up, even one as cool as this. But other than using the same techniques, he used them on the same bunch of guys over and over. And not only the foot soldiers, but you end up fighting the same bosses again and again. This really drilled the boredom in after a point. I was sick of fighting this guy. It seems like the devs ran out of ideas or just got lazy. And other than repeating the henchmen and the bosses, we had to do a lot of backtracking so to speak. So the stages were also repeated, a lot. This jungle scene looked great at the beginning but got real old real fast. The puzzle solving should not have been in this game either, totally unnecessary. They were cheap and generic puzzles and played no real part in the game. You'd again find yourself doing the same silly things over and over. Carrying a power cell here, then carrying another one there. Unnecessary garbage. I already spoke about the graphics, but that was the okay side of the graphics. While the characters and cutscenes were okay, the environments were really bland and seeing some of these environments repeatedly did not help. If you only visited a stage once, it wouldn't have been so obvious and tedious. But then that goes back to the repetition I mentioned. Another unnecessary addition was the stealth stages. They would not have been unnecessary if the devs actually made them worthwhile though. If they actually made them entertaining. Because think about it, Wolverine with those claws sneaking up on unsuspecting soon to be victims seems like a cool idea. But apparently devs were in a rush to release as usual or they just didn't see it my way. Do you remember the last time an experiment escaped? Yeah, it was some freak who controlled metal, wasn't it? Something like that. The final nail would be the camera. At first I thought it was tolerable, but then after getting deep in the game I realized it was just plain bad. Another miserable failure at creating a proper camera system in a third person game. It happens so often. So X-Men Origins Wolverine, while not being a total train wreck and one of the better superhero movie to video game adaptations is still far from greatness and with all these shortcomings I experienced, the lab gives X-Men Origins Wolverine a 6 out of 10. You are really starting to annoy me! Coming up, we look at Bioshock Infinite and the original Bioshock, plus some Super Street Fighter Online in the lobby. where we take a trip down memory lane as PG gives us her take on the original Bioshock. A man has a choice. I chose the impossible. Every now and then a game pops up that doesn't really appeal to me, even with all the previews and hype the producers of the titles surround it with. It just doesn't get my attention. So I ask you, my friend, if your life were the prize, would you kill the innocent? I saw this game in previews. I saw it on the store shelves, but it just never quite got my attention. Man, was I an idiot. In Bioshock, 
you're introduced to tonics and plasmids. Let me explain what these are. Tonics and plasmids are basically power-ups or items that allow you to power up. You can equip these at a gene swapping bag or buy one. The tonics will either increase your status or allow you to use first aid kits for your health or your Eve. Your genetic code is being rewritten. Just hold on and everything will be fine. Your Eve is basically magical abilities. Plasmids allow you to do some more interesting things. It allows you to do stuff like use telekinesis or fire off lightning bolts. You get your plasmids from a gatherer's garden by using something called Atom. What this Atom is, is a substance that's your power source. You get this Atom from these creepy little girls you see running around the world of rapture, sticking needles into dead bodies. Look, Mr. Bubbles, it's an angel. Save the little sisters from the big daddy you see running beside them, then turn them back to normal. Or you can take the Atom directly from them, which kills them. It's your call. If you decide to do the latter, you get more Adam. It boils down to a question of morality. Thank you, mister. Apart from these big daddies and the creepy little sisters with their needles and the splicers, which are some crazed lunatics who inhabit Rapture, you'll also have to contend with turret guns. These guns are like oversized mosquitoes, but what you can do is hack them. By this I mean reprogram them. Not only can you hack into the turret guns, but a lot of other things in the game. This was a pretty cool addition. Hacking can be a bit frustrating at first, but you don't have to do it. You can use auto hacks. If you see it through though, you might start enjoying the hacks. Once you get good at hacking, it seems like an entertaining mini game. Plasmids changed everything. They destroyed our bodies, our minds. We couldn't handle it. Bioshock's arsenal of weapons is quite satisfying. Now, you only have one melee weapon at your disposal, a wrench, but for me, that's good enough. <laughs> now for the guns, this gets entertaining. Almost every gun in Bioshock has three ammo types. Some of the guns and ammo are not very useful all the time, and some can be upgraded. So figure out what to use when. <laughs> <laughs> Bioshock's story is really good. Once you're able to follow a twisting storyline, you too will appreciate it. Is it someone new? Games like Bioshock gives me reasons to continue blowing my money on video games. The game is just that good. This little fish looks like he just had his cherry popped. Wonder if he's still got some Adam on him. As we approach the release of Bioshock Infinite later this year, we've decided to remind our viewers of Bioshock's roots. Here's a review of Bioshock 2 for the PS3. The original Bioshock, in my opinion, was and still is a groundbreaking game. The way I see it, to this day I haven't really seen a Bioshock clone. And even more so, I can't say Bioshock is a ripoff of anything I've played in the past. So yeah. I think it's fair and safe to say the Bioshock series is an original one. With that said, let's move on to Bioshock 2. I got this one for the PS3. I got it long after its release, but it's still a worthwhile buy. This is it, Chief. End of the line. Let me start with the visuals. Although released in 2010, the graphics are still up to par with games released this year. Not with the best of the best, but still a lot of eye candy to appreciate here. This underwater utopia, although a bit of a dump and haven for fiends and mutants, is still a sight to behold. Let's go out to play, Daddy! The story of Bioshock is a decent one. I had my doubts before playing, since you end up playing in the shoes of a big daddy this time, but it turned out well enough and there's some advantages to playing as a big daddy. The story of Bioshock 2 follows up 8 years after the first. Now, there's a new terror in Rapture. A new monster has risen and is snatching the little sisters of Rapture, and it's up to you to take down this menace while battling for your own survival. The 
The story is played out with the same top-notch audio as before, with great voice acting, convincing scores and sound effects that totally immerses you in this fictional world of Rapture once again. <laughs> One of the advantages I mentioned of being a big daddy that I first noticed was the use of plasmids. It's a whole lot simpler to use these plasmids. This makes more sense, especially in a game like this where the learning curve is a bit tricky. I'll revisit this learning curve in a few. Hacking, which is a major part of Bioshock, has also been simplified. Still not the easiest thing to pull off, especially in a heated situation, but still easier than the first, a much appreciated addition. Now there's an unexpected addition to my thumbs up section of this review, the multiplayer. I really thought this would have been a laughable addition. I really just didn't see how this could be anything worthy of game time or something I'd even played twice. But the multiplayer, well the little I've played is really good and just like the campaign offers a refreshing change, really well put together and some incredible fun. I'll give you all more insight on this in the lobby another day. Okay, here's the parts of the game that made it, but barely in my opinion. First is the general gameplay. A change, a refreshing one, but not for everyone. There's a very strong emphasis on the need for strategy in Bioshock 2. You can't just run and gun as you might in some other titles, and it's not a choice of two play types either, like run and gun or stealth. There's a lot more in the way of strategic gameplay required here. You really have to figure out the best combinations of melee, projectile, and plasmid use to take down specific enemies. It seems like no one thing is ever good enough for any one enemy type, even the weaker ones. <laughs> But the great thing is, in Bioshock 2 there are really a lot of ways you can dispatch the enemy. From full head-on brawling to sneaky approaches like hacking a security camera turrets, or the use of plasmids which can burn, freeze, electrocute and a lot more. Really good stuff for any gamer who requires more than games like Battlefield and Call of Duty has to offer. A nice change. More on gameplay and strategy. The selection of weapons are also very interesting. Sometimes I get this strong survival horror vibe from Bioshock 2, especially where ammo is concerned. But the weapons are pretty effective once you learn the basic rules of conservation and understand when to use what. If you don't get that, then you'll think the weapons are complete garbage. And one shot does not kill, so it's something you need to get used to, kind of like an acquired taste. Now, with all these words of praise, you might ask, why is this only considered okay and not great? Why did I say these elements barely made it? Well, it's the learning curve I mentioned earlier. The whole emphasis on strategy thing requires a bit of reprogramming for gamers like myself who play a lot of the other more popular first person shooters. Like I said before, the Bioshock universe is different, so coming over to this side of the gaming realm will require a bit of practice. This is not like Call of Duty and so my point is. This game is not for everybody and will turn some off and away. Daddy was sleeping for such a long time and Eleanor has missed you. The autosave feature is also in my acceptable books. The checkpoints are fairly distributed but here is a thing about the autosave. It's kind of a false sense of security. You might think that when you autosave and die and start back at a particular checkpoint that it's really saved. But if you switch the game off without doing a manual save, you'll realize no, you're gonna have to start back at the last real save you had. Yeah, it's kinda tricky and it set me back a couple of times and I forgot to do that, but you'll get used to it. Well, I'd say he's hiding something, but he sorta of took the fun out of that one. Here's the only real bad thing I found in Bioshock 2. Now I know I said there are advantages to playing as a big daddy, but the disadvantages are the things that kinda gets to me. First up, and I guess this goes back to the whole Bioshock isn't for everyone thing. When you just get started, your character is a bit of a clumsy ox, for lack of better words. As the game progresses, your character becomes stronger and more useful, but in the earlier stages, he's a real lemon. You'll start to think back to the original Bioshock and remember the big daddies you fought. You'll remember them being a whole lot better, harder to take down, while the enemy on the other hand spins you like a wheel all around Rapture. Like I said, as the game progresses, you become a more efficient adversary. But that slow buildup can turn a lot of people off, especially if this is your first time around the Bioshock block. You'll find yourself dying a whole lot at first. Get ready for that. 
But at the end of it all, Bioshock 2 is one solid title that I'm glad I picked up. Great game. The Lab gives Bioshock 2 an 8 out of 10. Don't go too far. We've got a look at some of the new maps in Modern Warfare 3 in the lobby. Visit us on the web at fabricatedprojects.com and follow us on Twitter. On the 16th of October, Devs Irrational Games and Publishers 2K Games will release Bioshock Infinite. Can you say must have title? You can picture happy gatherings. Well, here's the thing about that release date. Now, that was the plan. Yeah, Bioshock Infinite was to be released on the 16th of October, yes. But, like with most titles, there has been a delay. Bioshock Infinite should be released next year, February. But I don't know when, and even if I got a specific release date, at the risk of putting my foot in my mouth, I'd keep that to myself until closer to the actual date. I do believe though that this setback will be for the best. Here's a quote I read from Ken Levine, developer and founding member at Irrational Games. When we announced the release date of Bioshock Infinite in March, we felt pretty good about the timing. Since then, we've come to realize that some specific tweaks and improvements will make Bioshock Infinite into something even more extraordinary. Call me a sucker, but I believe this to be true and I'm looking forward to a masterpiece in 2013. Bioshock Infinite will be worth the wait. I know that once it's not cancelled, this delay will be for the best. If it means that devs need more time to make this game perfect, then I'll wait. Why rush it? I'm in no hurry really. There'll be a lot to hold me over till then. And I know there's no way we'll get a Duke Nukem type experience. How do I know? Well, come on. I think everybody knew Duke Nukem Forever would be a crap game no matter how long we waited. <laughs> In the lobby today, the Sage talks Super Street Fighter Online and a bit on some of the new maps released for Modern Warfare 3. Okay, here we go. One of my favorite parts of the day. The lobby. First up, I'll run through some of the new maps in Modern Warfare 3. DLC Collection 1. Now, Elite Premium members would have already had access to this plus the more recently released Elite Playlist, which we'll get into in another lobby. Yeah, ready for you. Now, DLC 1 gives us new multiplayer maps, a new survival mode, and two new Spec Ops missions. The new multiplayer maps are Liberation, Piazza, Overwatch, and Black Box. I'd say my favorite of the four would be Overwatch. They're all pretty decent maps, some like them, some don't. I have no problems with any of them. More than I can say for some of the original maps. Now Super Street Fighter 4, a title that was released a while back. It's good to see that even to this day, many matches are easily found. Fighting games are no longer at the top of my list of favorite genres, but I'll always enjoy a good game of Street Fighter or Tekken. Super Street Fighter still gives me that rush it did many years ago. I'm happy to report, I've still got some skills. I'm rusty, but I've still got a little bit of skills. My only concern is that questionable picture of Ken and Ryu at the title screen, but uh, whatever. Different discussion for a different day. I'm also proud to report my progress in Gears of War 3. No longer am I at the bottom of the list. After about a week of practice, I've learned how to play this game in multiplayer. I spent quality time in horde mode with either a team of 4 or 3 other players, and I think it's safe to say my skills have improved. Or at least I have some skills to speak of. Enemy mark! My original concerns remain the same though. I still believe it's ridiculous to say the least how many shots it takes to take your opponent down. And I still believe active reloading is the brainchild of a moron. That's all still bad. 
the camera is still questionable, especially in a heated confrontation where you're trying to rule to safety among other things. But for now, Gears of War 3 is at the top of my shelf in the multiplayer lineup. I've really gotten into it and now my lineup is like this in order of preference. Gears of War 3, Medal of Honor, Battlefield 3 and Modern Warfare 3. Now, Modern Warfare 3 is at the bottom simply because I'm kinda sick of that game. Not entirely because, I mean, at least it's still on the list. But after reaching level 80, that took a whole lot of playtime out of me and I'm just like, what's next? The game doesn't offer me much more and it isn't that much fun anymore. I'm contemplating going to Prestige but I don't really see the point. I don't love the game that much to go re-rank all over again so I mean, I don't know what this whole Prestige thing is about, I'm not sure what purpose it serves and I don't know, I guess if you're like a real diehard modern warfare enthusiast then yeah, you'd want to go and hit level 80 all over again but I'm not feeling that, no. I found myself doing a whole lot better overall in multiplayer matches though, and this is because of Gears of War 3. My aim has significantly improved simply because in Gears you have to be accurate with so many shots before the opposition falls that once you start getting kills in Gears under those circumstances, you have to you, you, you just have to have a better aim. So in games like Medal of Honor, I'm doing much better, getting them kills in killstreak awards like this here. Hey, so until next time, thanks for playing. On the next episode of The Lab, we'll review the campaign modes in both Modern Warfare 3 and Battlefield 3, and so much more. Don't miss it. with the information we crave. Hey Kena, got a few quick things to run through today. Some info every game I need. Bad news for some. If you're still playing Metal Gear Solid online, you'll need to know the servers will be down on June 12. That's right, no more Metal Gear Solid 4 multiplayer. The whole Konami ID was a miserable production that probably turned off a lot of gamers in the first place anyway. Then there's news from Activision that Black Ops 2 will revolutionize the franchise. To be honest with you, I love all the Call of Duty games and I'm part of the minority who prefer titles made by Treyarch, but still love them all. But churning out a new one every year? Mm. And now Black Ops 2 looks like it falls somewhere between Halo and Killzone. I don't know. I can't say that I'm doing cartwheels over this one, but I'm keeping my fingers crossed. Right. The Guinness Book of World Records has listed Call of Duty Black Ops as the game with the best ending of all time. Now while I don't entirely agree with this, I must say, more power to the Call of Duty franchise and I hope this motivates them to think even more outside the box for Black Ops 2. New killstreak rewards and the inclusion of what looks like mechs? Mm, not cutting it. 8, 11, 22, 21, 5, 17. Hope you found the info useful. And if you did, just remember who boss you. A special thanks to Fashion for Life for my wardrobe. Acropolis Gaming Lounge for this excellent location and to all of you for watching. Until next time, you can find us online at fabricatedprojects.com. Email your comments to us at thelabvideogametv at yahoo.com. And look us up on Facebook and Twitter. Remember, our game is never over.